begging for mercy. You may call me Bishop. Agent Bishop, TMNT Origin Explored. Welcome back to our channel. We are back with yet another delightful video. I'm your host, Tia Ayer. As we continue with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, today we will explore more and talk about Agent Bishop and his origins. If you want to know more about the other characters from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can watch them right here on our channel. The Chief of Earth Protection Force Agent John Bishop is a special agent of the American government and the secondary antagonist of the 2003 animated series. He works to prevent a alien invasion of Earth. He first appeared in the Worlds Collide, Space Invaders storyline of the third season of the 2003 television series, where he abducted the Ninja Turtles and attempted to dissect them in an effort to discover the mysteries of their mutation. Very well, Michelangelo. When you scream my name, pleading to make the pain stop. Since that day, he has participated in the majority of the main plot lines of the series as the Turtles' former adversary and eventually their ally. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. You have no idea what you're up against. Agent Bishop Origin from TMNT 2003 TV series. John Bishop, a soldier of the United States in the early 17th century, was kidnapped by gray aliens while taking part in the Battle of New Orleans for reasons that remain a mystery. After being subjected to an experiment, he flees to or whether is brought back to the show is ambiguous on here, keeping both the possibilities open to the battlefield. Although the details of the test are unknown, it is assumed that they have played some role in Bishop's increased strength and life. Bishop was traumatized by the abduction, which also caused him to become persistently afraid of extraterrestrials. The encounter forever changed him, and he has since devoted his life to preventing an alien invasion. Pity you won't survive the next two minutes. There isn't much information available about Bishop's life in the following 189 years other than the fact that he was indeed present when the United States Army came into contact with the first aliens to crash on American soil, and when the Black Ops Earth Protection Force was established in 1870 under the Grant administration. He was also in charge of the 1947 Roswell incident, which was actually brought on by the covert destruction of a Greys flyer saucer. Given that the alien they pulled out seemed to recognize Bishop, these Greys may be the ones who used Bishop in their experiments. In the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and animation from 2003. J. Finn Monster, also referred to as T-9581, was a Navy lieutenant who was transformed into a mutant by Bishop's genetic experimentation for unexplained reasons. He makes an appearance in the Dragon's Brew episode. Bishop serves as J. Finn's best man in more recent times. Bishop served as the leader of the Earth Protection Force, a covert operation set up to defend Earth from extraterrestrial dangers during the Ninja Turtles 2003 series. Bishop wanted to create a force of super soldiers by conducting covert and egregiously unethical experiments on aliens and mutants who had been kidnapped. He adopted an any means necessary strategy for his goal, hoping to gather extraterrestrial technology and use it to enhance humanity's gene stock. Bishop was cunning, heartless, and capable of doing almost anything to get what he desired. He reached an agreement with the Federation during the Triceraton invasion, surrendering the Fugitoid and his understanding of the teleportal that destroys the entire world in return for what he needs and a promise that the Earth will be left alone. In addition, Bishop kidnapped the turtles to serve as research subjects and brought them to his lab where he claims that he has a wealth of information about them. The turtles, of course, did not want to accept such exploitation and neither did Leatherhead, whom he tortured, experimented on, and imprisoned. Bishop traumatized Leatherhead, releasing his primordial tendencies. When Casey Jones, April O'Neil, and Splinter barged into Bishop's lab, he was about to eviscerate them in a acquire more DNA. When Bishop arrived at a different base, Honeycutt's message interfered with his duties, so he gave the order to break the transmission. Before Leatherhead overcomes Bishop, he fights Splinter, the Turtles, and Casey. Bishop then gets away with the DNA specimens, but not before promising to see them again. Bishop also turned the Foot Clan and Utrom Shredder against him. He called Oroku Saki to demand that he hand over every piece of Triceratops.
Marathon Tech that he had been looting under the guise of restoring New York, intimidating to kill Karai if he failed to act in 45 minutes. Karai had been attempting to extract an alien computer chip from the administration when Bishop set up an efficient trap for her. Instead of giving up, Saki dispatched Han to rescue Karai, who had been following Bishop around town. Bishop then made the decision to defeat the beast finally, but the turtles intervened since he is the only one they despise more than Han. Bishop decides to get off the train since he is outnumbered, but not before telling the turtles that he took their DNA, accelerating his efforts by decades. Bishop then launched an intricate scheme to apprehend Splinter, whose genetic structure was much, much more complicated. He intended to replicate the advanced DNA in order to raise an army of super soldiers, all made in his likeness, who would serve as a combat-ready defense against alien attacks. Their DNA would be upgraded by genetic engineering, alien autopsy, and turtle DNA theft. His first invention was the Slayer, a cyborg designed to track down aliens without caring whether humans were harmed in the process. A model who, during the series, evolved into the Rat King 2.0 version of this series. However, with Leatherhead's assistance, Honeycutt and the Turtles attacked the lab and were able to capture the Slayer and place her in a tank. Bishop was impaled on a hook while fighting Splinter, but he managed to live and sneak out to the flooded facility when no one was watching. Gray liquid was on him, which suggested that he was not a human. Bishop had an insider connection with Dr. Baxton Stockman, who had grown weary of the Shredder's punishment at Oroku Saki's farewell party. He pursued Finn to the home of his wife and said that Finn still remembered. Soon later, Bishop finds out that the Purple Dragons have taken Finn and becomes adamant about finding the mutant. Sadly, Bishop is unable to find the mutant and instead claims that he has perished in a fire. The officials decide to reduce funds for the EP after this latest setback. In order to convince him to stop an extraterrestrial invasion and prove the value of his group, Bishop fabricated one. They created the impression that Earth was once again under attack by using a single spaceship in the sky, remote-controlled aliens, and numerous holograms. Sadly, the alien debris got into the sewage and unintentionally contacted the local wildlife, mutating it into a ferocious, nearly sentient species. There was no stopping the outbreak, therefore Bishop had to concentrate the EPF's energy on doing so. Bishop saved the president. His strategy was successful because he got the turtles, which the government wanted, and the president agreed to give him money to establish the EPF. Bishop warned Stockman to delay his attempt to obtain a new human body and insisted that Stockman fix his messes. However, his head scientist was too preoccupied with building his own body. But after a string of hallucinations and decompositions, it turned out to be a failure. Stockman appeared to have drowned in the East River, but Bishop merely brought him back to life by saying that he required his brain to stop the spread. The turtles, except for the diseased, Donatello requested that they provide a cure. Bishop consented and assigned Stockman and Leatherhead to acquire the heart of Tengu, which contained a repository of extraterrestrial technologies according to a mysterious contact. However, when Stockman attempted to break the heart of lasers, the creature shut off connections, causing the heart to fracture. Bishop was unaware that the apparition was the Waterfoot Mystic, who was deceiving everyone to undermine Karai's authority over them. When they gave it to him, he ordered Area 51 to self-destruct to hide its existence, even if everyone fled before that, and then ordered the cure to be distributed around New York. In Coney Island, Stockman discovered several nanobots they mistook for new alien technology because they did not realize that they were a government project. One of the nanomachines receives a microchip from Stockman, enabling it to carry out Bishop's orders. Sadly, they discovered that the Nanos had intelligence and that their original programming had been engaged in conflict with Stockman. They had gathered all the cutting-edge technologies as they fled, highlighting Stockman's arrogance yet again to Bishop. The last assault on the Tengu Shredder at the turtle side included Bishop, Stockman, and the remainder of the EPF troops. Due to a shared objective, the turtles were forced to cooperate with Bishop despite their reluctance, especially since the challenges presented by the Tengu Shredder were so severe that the turtles needed assistance from both their allies and foes to defeat it. He had an uncertain grudging admiration for the turtle skills despite the fact that they were usually opponents of the bishop. In the wedding bells and bites, Bishop makes an appearance while seeing April and Casey's nuptials on a monitor. A small group of Krang defectors. We broke away from the Krang hive mind many centuries ago.
Bishop as an Utrom. Agent Bishop is a Ninja Turtles ally. He is an Utrom from Dimension X and one of the principal associates of the Utrom High Committee. Agent Bishop assists the Turtles in stopping the Triceraton Empire from launching an invasion on Earth in the first place as the Kron Subprime's brother, known initially as Knights, along with the forthcoming Kron invasion. He uses two Utrom laser pistols as his go-to signature weapons. Bishop and his brother Knight join the Utrom High Council in Dimension X during an unspecific period. At one time, he even created the Norman Camouflage, which turned into the disguise for which he began gaining notoriety. Bishop also got to know Professor Zayton Honeycutt from the world Dehunib, who after that became accountable for creating the Heart of Darkness. The Utrom extraterrestrial race nearly went extinct at some point when an Utrom scientist, Kron, transformed after learning about the carcinogen from the Krithratrogons. The majority of the Utroms were corrupted by Krons. Krons hive mind in addition to his mutation which led to his becoming the Krong. One of the Utroms was Knight who later rose to the position of the second in command under Kron Prime. Agent has been pleading with his brother to rejoin the Ultram High Committee ever since even though he now views him as a turncoat. Now let us come back to the War of Dimension X and how the story of Bishop unfolded in it. The Salamandrians whom the Turtles met, Guthraka and Yugitha, commonly known as Sal Commander and Mona Lisa, are conversing with Kron Subprime about forming a coalition to fight the Triceratons somewhere in Dimension X. Kron Subprime disapproves of the concept of going up against the Triceratons and claims that his ethnicity has altered other worlds in order to avoid them. Krang Subprime encircles the Salamandrians with Kron droids, Biotroids, and Kron scout ships. Whenever the turtles are mentioned, proclaiming them enemies of the Kron in case they are associated with the TMNT. The Ulyxis relaxes in space while the stealth vessel separates and transports the Fugitoid and the turtles to the location where they want to open a gateway to Dimension X as well as enlist the help of the Utrams. Although Casey and April are disappointed that they could not join them, as soon as the stealth vessel enters Dimension X, we see Mikey switching into Dimension X protection gear. Mikey guides the Fugitoid and the turtles to the Utrum command, which is deftly concealed beneath a cloaking crown. Bishop takes the Fugitoid to meet the remainder of the Ultram Committee, which consists of an Ultram Krung droid, who could speak French, Pawn, Rook, and the mortal disguise of Irma that Kron Subprime had taken and the Ultram Queen who assumes the impression of Miss Campbell. When the Fugitoid is encircled by Krung droids loyal to the Utrams and Bishop, he is able to show Bishop that he is an old friend of Utram, Professor Honeycutt, by a secret handshake. The Ultram Committee acknowledges the actions of the TMNT. Meanwhile, Raph questions the Utrom's intentions to never come to their aid. Rook disputes the claims that all Earthlings are unreasonable and therefore should not be trusted. The Council goes on to explain that once upon a time when Utrom's were numerous and had distinctive personalities of their own, Kron Prime used to be an Utron scientist. However, when Kron Prime began researching the Krithatragon mutagen that caused it to mutate to Kron Prime, it employed its strong psionic abilities to transform numerous Utrom into faithful, obedient Kron. This caused a rift among the Utrom, who opposed Krang Prime's authority. The Utrom have a very small population in comparison to Kron Prime's hundreds of Kron. Kron Subprime and many Biodroids and Krong Droids raid the gathered heroes before the Ultram Queen has a chance to speak. At this point, the Turtles discuss the Heart of Darkness, explaining their future origins and the journey of the Triceratons to put the Apocalypse weapon back together to utilize on Earth. To the Council's surprise, Leo disputes the Ultram's claim that they concealed the parts in the securest region of the universe despite Rook's insistence that they did so also. Honeycutt claims to have a strategy to eliminate the Heart of Darkness permanently. Mikey can persuade the Ultram Queen to give them the information regarding the location of the additional two components by pleading sweetly despite the Ultram Council's reluctance to help. In the conflict, the Ultram Queen's Miss Campbell's body is fried, causing her to depart it before Kron Subprime kidnaps her. Kron Subprime captures the Ultram Queen and flees to his own base, where he attempts to learn more about the Heart of Darkness from the Ultram Queen. However, the Ultram Queen denies giving him any facts about the apocalyptic weapon. Rook is at 
upset at how Kron Subprime exploits the Irma body for his own interest while she built it for good. Initially unbeknownst to him, Rath and Mikey followed him and could see Sal Commander and Mona from their cell. However, the Salamandrians are reluctant to assist in the rescue of the Ultram Queen because they believe that each Kron is malicious as a result of having been earlier apprehended by Kron Subprime. Raph is adamant that their motives for helping the Ultram are honorable. Mona informs Cell Commander about her believing Raph on it. Bishop declares that the Utrams are entering a conflict with the Kron as a result of the capture of the Utram Queen and beckons the Utram droids back to the headquarters of the Utram Council. In return for the Turtles and Honeycutt's assistant, Bishop says that he will think about revealing the whereabouts of the other elements of the Black Hole Generator. In order to prevent Raph, Mikey, Sal Commander, and Mona from saving the Utrum Queen at Kron Subprime's headquarters, Kron Subprime summons a Draco droid. The Fugitoid attempts to ask Rook about the last two components of the Heart of Darkness, but prior to answering, her skull is obliterated, much to his dismay. Fortunately, the other Ultrams and Bishop show up and a fight starts. Despite suffering significant harm to his human disguise, Bishop can overwhelm and appear to beat Kron Subprime by calling him by his former Ultra moniker, Knight, prior to siding with Kron Prime. To be our greatest hero, you were a true brother. Oh, for the love of Christ! <laughs> Kron Subprime discloses that he was saved by a Kron scout ship just as the Draco droid is delivered a strike that leaves it swerving out of hand. Much to Kron Subprime's vexation and frustration, the scout ship is carried out by the incorrigible Draco droid. The remaining Kron are compelled to retreat as the Ultrams try to prevent them from fleeing due to the suspected loss of Kron Subprime. The Ultram droids capture the remaining Kron droids and Bishop reveals the whereabouts of the other two shards so that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can track them down and eliminate them forever. The second component is located in Varuna's Cosmic Ocean. The last piece is located at the farthest reaches of the known heavens on the lost planet of Magdamar. Leo promises to destroy the Heart of Darkness's components completely. Additionally, the Salamandrians develop a lot more regard for the Ultrams. As the others watch, Mona pulls Raph into a passionate kiss before he can attack Mikey for bringing up their romantic relationship. Agent Bishop from IDW Comic Agent John Bishop's real name, Jonathan W. Bishop, led the Earth Protection Force in the IDW timeline. He was obsessed with both aliens and mutants. He believed that aliens and mutants both constitute an imminent existential risk to humanity and was resolved to wipe them out without regard for the costs or to make any concessions. Wayne and Marie Bishop welcomed John into the world in 1968 at the Las Vegas General Hospital. He was extraordinarily clever from a young age, yet his body was malformed and stunted. He was not expected to survive the night because his mom went into labor too soon. His dad took him home from the hospital after he underwent an unidentified treatment that ultimately saved his life. Agent Bishop makes his first appearance in the 21st century when he meets Alex Winter and Wesley Knight, close to Bernau Island, to find out more about the mutanimals that Winter had already been tracking for dark water. The fundamental driver for Agent Bishop's fervent loathing of all mutants is his father, the EPF's founder, and what he discovered in his childhood. Agent Bishop kept using dark water to observe the creatures of New York in the following weeks. This engagement culminated in a siege during which the Turtles battled to avoid capture as the EPF encircled the TCRI headquarters in an effort to apprehend the mutant Zodai. Even though the Turtles had finally won, Agent Bishop saw the conflict as a useful demonstration of his adversary's capabilities. When the EPF caught Slash and transformed him into a usable weapon during the Desperate Measure arc, he obtained a vital asset. He used Slash to successfully capture all of the mutanimals, except for Hob, with the intention of also controlling them via inserted brain nodes. In retaliation, Hob abducted Pam Knight, the wife of Wesley Knight and Agent Bishop's elderly father, threatening to kill them if his pals were not released. Alex Winter and Knight made the decision to break Darkwater's relationship with him, releasing the mutanimals and handing over Agent Bishop to them, despite Bishop's refusal to engage in negotiations with the mutants. But Agent Bishop later killed his own father because he saw him as nothing more than a hollow shell of a man that he once was. It was also disclosed that he now had a metal cranium and entirely mechanical hands making him a cyborg. Soon after the turtles stay in Dimension X, 
the EPF and Bishop learned of the upcoming Triceraton invasion and waited for the aliens to arrive on a New York street. While Agent Bishop initially claimed to be nice, he quickly exposed his true motivations and a fierce conflict erupted between the EPF and the Triceratons. Shortly after, the foot plane seized him and Splinter pitched him a short-term alliance to end the danger. Employing Slash as his weaponry, Agent Bishop engaged in combat and was upset and enraged when the Triceratons were transported away. Agent Bishop requested Senator Robert Lawson's resources to combat the Triceratons successfully. Lawson's consented to provide him with anything that he had required, enabling the imposition of martial law throughout New York. Agent Bishop directed a group of soldiers to raid Burno Island after learning that they were there. He asked Detective Kara Lewis to fetch Baxter Stockman to him so that he could discover where they had gone and learn the alien's current location. While trying to penetrate the island's defenses and rescue Slash from his control, he was ambushed by the mutanimals and the turtles. Hob destroyed Agent Bishop's head, but his robot body still reflected the real Hob. After disclosing that Slash possessed a nuclear weapon implanted in his body, he rocketed off the island. Later, he gave the EPF the order to kidnap Raphael, subjecting him to horrifying tests and eviscerate him for scientific investigation. After Bishop and the turtle almost fought, when Raphael woke up and broke free from his captivity, Raphael was able to flee, thanks to a facility explosion that destroyed Agent Bishop's ex suit. Although the headquarters were upside down, there was very little structural damage. Bishop was searching for an alternative for his weapon. Slash when Dr. Shelvin quickly finished a new body for him. Burno Island was still above the water, and his mutant foes were still alive, making him feel disgusted at having been sacrificed in vain. He might have considered using Leatherhead, whom he had been monitoring for some time. And in the meantime, another attack on the base was underway. He was presented with an alliance by Metalhead. Bishop thanked them and left the room to study more of what the robot had to offer while being kept in play by the ETH troops. A deal was reached using Area 51. Bishop gave him access to all the tech the robot required for maintenance in exchange for completely wiping out the mutants and the turtles in the city. This partnership gave Bishop access to the turtles and Harold Lilja's lab, leaving Jenica in grave danger. Metalhead launched the attack from the rooftops. The turtles were forced to flee when the ETH troops assaulted from the ground, causing panic and obliterating the ooze conduit that would have allowed Splinter's Chimnin to heal her injuries. Arnold Jones, who grieved that his son did not care about Janika's appearance after she had turned into a mutant, was recruited by Bishop by taking advantage of the severe circumstances in his opponent's camp. Bishop, as well as his new partner, made futile attempts to get rid of the terrorists along with his cronies. He was given a chance to command any of the two Slash clones created using the genes of the extinct turtle. The ETH was aware of Old Hob Street attack the evening of Stockman's inauguration, which rendered some of the scientists' supporters mutant. Lil Jack and Meitner were tasked creating a new gateway for the ETH as Metalhead watched suspiciously. Bishop and his soldiers were drawn to the noise of war, which once more compelled the turtles to escape through the gate. Donatello used the robot's fundamental psychology when the turtles landed to deliver their buddies in order to ultimately defeat and destroy it. This time around, Leonardo had a strategy that made his way towards the Foot Clan district, luring the troops there to kill Karai. During this moment, his brothers went to bring Splinter and the orphans. Soon, Bebop, Rocksteady, and the Foot Ninjas joined the troops. Hun, Bishop, and the two clones in a confrontation with Leonardo. The turtle realized that the officer's cybernetic envelope had been modified to handle situations like this after chopping both of Bishop's arms again. Bishop was now holding weapons that were firing powerful electric shocks. Raphael, who had been forced to the mat, hurled himself on the bot in an attempt to murder its pilot with his sigh, but Leonard was spared. His brother stopped him in time to prevent the worst from happening. However, Bishop had not finished speaking. He made an attempt to murder Casey, who was protesting his father's behavior. The latter interfered in order to protect his son and was shot dead as a result. Bishop impersonated Leonardo at the exact moment to deliver the last blow. The final of Slash's two clones, who got glimpses of the original Turtle's memories, leaped on Bishop and killed him at the same moment. The agent and the remainder of the cybernetic body were both crushed.
What makes Agent Bishop so dangerous? Well, with the help of his acrobatic and martial arts, Bishop could fend off many attacks from the turtles and his companions. He only needed to leap to the roof to reach Leonardo's sword. He had great speed and a tremendously high leap. Bishop could chop really swiftly and disarm Leo just in a split second. Bishop is stronger than Hun and can take him down, and he once tore an exam table from its stand and used a hand chain to pull off a robot's arm. His regeneration and durability are extraordinary. He strikes metal poles with plenty of power to damage them, is severely shocked by electricity yet soon bounces back. He is launched and impaled upon a metal hook by an explosion, and after a brief period he begins to bleed blue blood. Bishop's body never gets old, it falls apart, and in order to combat this he had his mind implanted into cloned bodies that he had made. Dr. Stockman's ultimate design for his physique reduced breakdown and improved speed, strength, and endurance. In addition to having considerable fundamental scientific knowledge in the area of genetics, Agent Bishop is a trained combat veteran and secret agent with 200 years of experience in all relevant military and espionage domains. Bishop is the ideal illustration of a man operating at the pinnacle of his physical potential. Although it is questionable where Bishop's physical strength comes from, he has almost superhuman speed and agility, which enabled him to dodge most attacks on his person. See, the odds have changed, but I never play the odds. In the episode Exodus Part 1, he also easily shows his ability to beat the elite guard of the Shredder. He even showed his ability to battle on a level with Splinter in Bishop's Gambit. His distinctive fighting technique in battle is mostly defensive, enabling him to adapt to essentially any circumstance and make use of any part of the actual battlefield to his benefit. He has endured over the ages partly because of a series of one or maybe two clone forms. Bishop certainly once has to transfer his identity into a clone body completely, but it is unknown how frequently this happened overall and what intervals during the series. He also succeeded in uniting Earth through espionage, discrediting allies, sabotage, and other means. He turned the EPF into Earth's military by working alongside others on magical defense, counterterrorism, and special operations. Bishop has access to a vast range of cutting-edge terrestrial and alien technologies as the Earth Protection Force leader. Bishop likes to utilize a specialized fighting suit with laser guns on intense combat missions. To stop this alien plague. It was a vow I made long ago. The ruthless, sadistic alien hater of all time. Because he was kidnapped and tortured by aliens when he was young, Agent John Bishop has an, an animosity that is extremely intense for them, as seen by the truth that he remembered all of the turtles' names when they first met. How do you know Donnie's name? And the professor? I know all your names, Raphael. He is often quite composed and likes to be in charge. Agent Bishop also loves learning as much as possible about his opponents and potential victims before encountering them. He seldom loses his temper and has a cool, crafty intellect. Bishop is deceptive, yet he detests it when he is deceived, as seen by his subdued but obvious rage when he discovered that the foot mystics had duped him into obtaining their release. One of the rare instances that Bishop was seen not being in charge of a situation occurred in this one. Bishop's brutal treatment of mutants and aliens is partly a coping mechanism for the trauma that he experienced at the hands of an extraterrestrial. Bishop is incredibly vicious. He eagerly anticipates the joy that he will have slicing the turtles and cruelly tormenting Leatherhead. Despite his cruel tendencies, Bishop's primary drive is to save the Earth so that others won't experience the same kind of suffering that he had at the claws of the aliens. He is, according to his own admission, a bigger picture sort of man, who feels that the aims justify the means because of his dedication to the protection of the globe. As a result, even if individuals are injured or even murdered, he thinks that it is worthwhile if it assures the preservation of the planet. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone! But not exactly bright. Say goodbye.